If we start with uh, the infrastructure side of things, um, to a large degree I think yes. Um, I think in order to, um, to enable this you need, you need a couple of things in terms of infrastructure. You need good connectivity, uh, you need good uh, data centre infrastructure, you need you know, transport systems etc etc to cater for the, the wider community is going to be servicing. Um, and to a large degree that's there. So for example on the connectivity side, the connectivity that we have across to the US um, and across to Europe, it, you know, it's there. I mean when you look at the kind of the round trip uh, figures, uh, latency figures, uh, across to New York, you know, you're talking sub 70 milliseconds across to New York or uh, across to London at sub 10 milliseconds, Amsterdam sub 15 milliseconds. So, you know, the, the connectivity is there. Um, we have the reach out to Europe, we have the reach out to the US. Um, we're a natural stepping stone um, to a lot of organisations that want to do business uh, in Europe from the US and globally. Um, so to a large extent it's there. Um, I think uh, from a, a data centre perspective uh, there's a little bit of work to be done on the infrastructure side in terms of energy. Um, uh, and power in general. Um, the uh, grid is a very good grid, very stable, etc. But there is definitely congestion on the network in places, um, and there is, you know, there's very little investment going on in terms of planning, uh, in terms of the networks and the grid. Um, but uh, you know, that's something I know that we, we as an industry, work with uh, the, you know, the likes of the ESB on. Um, and then the other side of things is, uh, and it's you know one of the questions is out there at the moment. Ireland's green credentials as well. Um, I think that Ireland uh, has you know positions itself very well when it comes to data centres uh, in terms of its green uh, credentials. You know the ambient temperature, uh, you know stability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, just back to the energy uh, topic there. Um, our green credentials in terms of the amount of energy that's generated from renewable sources, it's, it's at 15% or just under 15%, which is, it's, you know, it's, it's higher than most countries in Europe, but I think there's a lot of work that can be done to improve that. Um, I know targets are around um, at 40% uh, to get our renewables up to about 40% uh, by 2020, so uh, you know, that, that remains to be seen, can that be met? First and foremost, I think we need to make sure that we do have the resources, the infrastructure to service these industries. Um, and then second of all, it's about promotion. I mean, we have a lot of uh, decent names uh, who've, who've come to Ireland. I mean, in the gaming uh, industry, you know, Zynga, Big Fish, these guys, um, uh, you know, in digital media, th there's a whole lot of, 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 I guess, really great reference um, clients, if you want to call them, to Ireland um, that have come here who can, you know, be our ambassadors, yeah. Um, things like, you know, the, uh, the events like the, the Dublin Web Summit where you, you've, you know, a plethora of these, these organisations coming into Ireland, people uh, associated with them, CEOs, etc. It's all about promoting Ireland and creating this idea of a community and, and a digital hub in Ireland. Um, and once, once you get the one, the two, the three uh, organisations coming in, um, having that good experience um, and, you know, talking about it, I think that's, that's how, we'll, how we will become the next generation of, of, of digital, digital hub. Certainly the big revolutions at the moment are, are mobility um, and digital media. Um, so uh, I think you, you guys reported on, on uh, Silicon Republic that uh, you know six billion people in the world now have uh, mobile devices. That's three quarters of the world's populations with with mobile devices, all looking to get content from any place, anywhere, any time. Um, so that that is a huge, uh, huge industry, a uh, potential industry. And I guess a spin-off from that is is is, is definitely the digital media side and, and the content delivery and, and all that. But gaming is a huge part of that, um, and it's it's great to see the you know the government task force on gaming, um, really trying to promote that because when I mention um, mobility, actually. 70% of the content that's consumed on mobile devices is actually games. Um, so that's another amazing statistic that would show you where, um, where all this is, is coming from. Um, so it's great to see the likes of, uh, again, Big Fish and, and Zynga Games and those guys coming into Ireland and uh, you know, creating um, what we hope will be the start of uh, you know, a hub for these industries.
You can't ignore the technology side of things and the need for, uh, you know, in this digital community, in this digital world, the need for, for maths and science. Uh, it, when you're talking about uh, education and, and, and that side of things and, and really um, getting our own um, society ready and geared up for, for the, you know, what we hope Ireland will be uh, very involved in. It's not just about the technology, the engineering, the science, the mathematics. Um, there's also the creative side um, of the industry as well. So, you know, when it comes to uh, um, developing games, things like that, the animations that go on, you know, there's a whole different side. So, it, you know, while it's important, uh, uh, you know, the maths, the, the, uh, the science, the technology subjects, we can't ignore the other elements as well. Um, so that's kind of in terms of what we can do uh, ourselves in Ireland, but there's certainly, um, we have to recognise there's going to be a shortfall in skills on the technology side. Um, and I know um, in the last Digital Ireland Forum, Sean O'Sullivan had some uh, pretty controversial things to say about bringing in talent from, from outside. But there has to be, certainly there's got to be a happy medium there, um, where we've got to, in order to drive these industries and to service these industries truly in Ireland, um, we have to let some of that talent pool in and, and we benefit from it. I think one of the low-hanging fruit, and it's something that's been talked about before, is, is the SME market and their, their adoption of technology. Um, there's, you know, there's very low adoption of, of technology amongst that group. Households you know, have adopted it more so than, than they have, etc. But um, I think once it's realised the opportunity globally from being um, uh, more connected or being more online or whatever it may be for SMEs, um, then obviously y you know your your GDP increases because they you know they're producing more services, they're producing more product in order to service a global community as opposed to uh, a domestic community. So that's a very kind of low hanging fruit. I think from a uh, business perspective, what it means is any businesses that are servicing these, these consumers have to be always available, have to provide a reliable service, have to provide a, a service that's um, uh, well connected and fast. Um, because you know any of these consumers that are online and are, are expecting to, to grab this content, they will not tel tolerate any downtime or interruptions to service or whatever the case may be. So for businesses, obviously they've got to have the right product. Um, but they've got to be able to service their client. Um, so reliability uh, of their service, scalability of their service as well. Um, you know, as things ramp up, I think that's a, a very important element as well.